Hey you awesome guys, I'm Alexia and today I'm going to introduce you into the world of the aquascaping tools and I will tell you the ones I prefer using and why. So stay tuned! When buying aquascaping tools, look out for the quality and the material of the tools you will use in future. It makes a big difference in using something you really like to touch and you really like to work with and it will make your work in the aquarium much faster and more effortless when you use stuff and tools and gear you really like and which has a very good quality. The quality is marked in a good elaboration, in a good use of material. It can be of nickel plated or of stainless steel, but if you ask my opinion, stainless steel is much more long lasting than nickel plated, so I prefer that. It's marked in how it fits in your hand and the grip and at least how the different elements fit together. For example, if the tweezers are very precious and very nice and the same is for the scissors as well. Scissors are one of our more, most important tools. We nearly do always use the scissors when we do the maintenance of the aquarium. When you look out for scissors, they are generally in the way it's formed, the tips is formed, two types. You have these sharp edges and you have these round edges. The main difference is that if you're using the sharp edges, it's easier to scratch the glass with it, but you can more easily catch the corners with it. In the way it is shaped, we can make differences in more shapes. One is the straight type scissor. It is very good to use when you have a deeper aquarium and you want to cut stem plants. For this case, I would always recommend to use the straight one. Then you have the curved type scissors which we try to use with smaller plants, but as well for stem plants. It's easier to reach them, uh, especially when it's harder to get to one of these corners where you want to, to trim the plants. And the last one, and actually a very special one, is this wave-shaped one, which we try to use, or which we use the most, and most often when we cut carpeting plants. This one we always use with carpeting plants for nearly nothing at all. My very favorite scissor is this little spring tap scissor. The reason I prefer this one is that it grips very nice in my hand. As you can see I have quite small hands so for me it's uh, quite obvious for using them, but as well because of the spring it's very easy to cut with them and um, it's very suitable for, to cut smaller plants but to make precious cuts with bigger and stem plants. So this type is kind of good for everything which is for stems. The other I really prefer is the curved scissors because I can reach with them deeper areas as well, very nice. And if I have to trim um, many stem plants in one, I can most easily do them with the curved ones. And as I just told you before, I, uh, there are these two shapes, the edgy ones and the rounded. And in the curved one, I always use the edges because then I can really go into the corners as well with the trimming. So this is a very nice one. And this is one I would really recommend you to try out and use from the beginning because it makes your work really much easier. Mm -hmm. 
All the items I show you today, I will link them down in the description. There are of course cheaper ones and more expensive tools I like to use. Of course, I try to link down as good as possible in the price range as well, but most often it's true as well here that more quality items are usually a little bit more expensive. So if you try to make it more for a longer time, this aquascaping hobby, then I would recommend you to invest in something really good. The next one are the tweezers. It's as well a must have. And um, you can find two shapes of the tweezers. You have the straight one and the curved one, which are a little bit curved at the end. Both are good for planting plants, to take out stuff you don't want to see there, to reorganize the stones you have there and for cleaning. The only thing I think is really important when searching and looking out for tweezers is that the end should fit very well. If the end doesn't fit, you can't hold the items and the stuff you want to put in there. So the fit and the grip, of course, for your hands is one of the most important. Everything else is less important when it's about the tweezers. So good fit and nice ends. Another item you see quite often from aquascapers is the sand flattener. But in my opinion, it's not a must-have tool. It can be very handy and helpful, but it's not the first one I would buy. The sand flattener has some really good qualities when it's about pushing back the stones on the sand or flattening out the sand. Or if you're setting up an aquarium, to make the rays, the elevation of the aquarium nice with the soil. For these uses, the set flattener is really good, but you can replace it easily with a good and stronger brush. And that's the reason I just put it here because I quite often use a brush as well. So this is the flat, the sand flattener. And yeah, if, if you build up quite often aquariums and you have sand, then it's, it's quite helpful, but not a must have. If this information until now was helpful for you, then please support me and hit the like button. Another tool, which many people may be afraid of, is the dispensing syringe. The reason I use one of these is when you're making water tests, then it's very easy to measure out the stuff you need to measure with it because it's always have a measurement table on it. And the other reason I use this is when you have algae and you want to put carbon or other additives on it, then you can really put it in a very good and nice spot on it and it won't just float everywhere in the water. So for this reason, I always use a syringe. The next tool I'm always using during aquarium maintenance is the algae scraper and the glass cleaner. Those remove the dirt and the algae effectively from the glass panes, which is quite important for a good view into the aquarium. This one here especially is from ADA, it's a nano scraper, which is very good for nano tanks, but if you have a bigger one, it may be a little bit too small, so sometimes it's a little bit slower to, to really nice clean it through, but I still do it with this one because it works really good. The blade is very sharp and thin, which marks for me the quality of it. It has a nice grip and it's the same with other items that you have to have a good grip. Here is another tool which is connected now with a sponge but you can always change the end and there you can put a blade as well. 
This is very nice if you have a deeper aquarium and you don't want to lean in the whole aquarium, so you can use these longer ones. Then we have all the brushes. We have the round tap pipe brushes, the wire and the plastic brushes. The pipe brushes are good for, for cleaning out the hard to reach pipes, the in and out floor, flow. And it's advisable to have more sizes because you have different sizes as well, or you may have them. So for this, I would recommend you to have two or three sizes so you can really clean everything and everywhere. Then you have this wire brush where you can use it on decoration, but never use it on glass because it will cause scratches. You can remove it as effectively a hard black brush algae, for example, and other dirt, which is very hard to remove on surfaces. And then we have plastic brushes. For this, I use an easily toothbrush where you can use in the corners, for example, to remove the little dirt and the same way on, on decoration. When using tooth or plastic brushes, always take attention on not pushing the glass too strong because you can scratch the silicon edges as well and this way you can ruin your aquarium. And then we have the sponge which we use to remove the lime scale and uh, therefore we ensure a better sight and a clearer sight into the aquarium. I prefer this Danula sponge because it's very strong, it's long lasting and even the harder side is very soft and I never realized that it scratches the glass. But when you're using a sponge, always take care of the sand. You are not allowed to get sand between the sponge and the glass. Otherwise, all the glass will be scratched through. So this is one point you really have to take attention on. In my opinion, if you're a beginner aquascaper, it's advisable and I think must have to have a minimum a curved type scissor and a straight scissor this way you can reach different areas during maintenance and a good tweezer will make your work much easier. These are, if you just started aquascaping, a must-have. Here you can find my aquascaping tutorial and just below check out my DIY LED background lightning I made. And in addition, if you didn't subscribe to my channel, then subscribe now to not miss any future videos and hope to see you soon.